Afcon 2023 and Nigeria are through to the final of the tournament. Eh? Yes. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Are we excited? Are we happy? Watch I get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Let me go back in Nairobi. I've been telling us, watch a kelele. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Harambe. K Sharks, K Sharks. But I, but I think we saw your, we, I think we saw your minister. We might have spotted him. Uh-huh. Seated in the VIP box in Abidjan. Oh yeah, yeah, he was in Abidjan. He was behind uh, Motsepe, yeah. the uh-huh. CAF president. Shout out, shout out. Babu, I mean, I could have to support your next staff con. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, that's good. Anyway, let's start. We'll start at the top. Um, this game started obviously. Osi Man was leading the line up front. Uh, at the likes of Wobs up in midfield, they went to the same formation: back three, yeah. uh, five in midfield, basically. And then two up front. Makumi, you said you like the way these guys play. They switched into a, to a back three after the first game when they could not create chances. They removed um, Yusuf got injured first game. He was playing well, yeah. got injured, then he was taken. He was actually stretched off. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Iwobi didn't start the second game, but he came back the third game. He's played the, all the, the whole tournament. Chukweze came the third game, created chances. He hasn't started another game. But they still look much better than the first game. Yep. What did you think of this uh, back three formation in this game against South Africa? Honestly, if I were to like compare uh, between Nigeria and South Africa, South Africa had a better defense line compared to Nigeria. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so honestly, I would say uh, when it comes to especially for South Africa, I think Williams was the key part of that defense line. But also, yeah, he's the goalkeeper, but also the defenders did do a very good job, especially when they decided to all just pack the bus. And it's it's a good it's a good thing when it comes to the defensive side, but also on the attack side, it's, it really doesn't add up because now you get Nigeria making all these uh, chances and trying to score and then but they still are lacking when it comes to I think they should play with two strikers up front maybe a 4-4-2 mm-hmm. Nigeria mm, which or, two strikers or striker like no, who? Because uh, they don't have their foot feet because Ian Nacho was Boniface, injured Boniface yeah, is Boniface, injured Boniface so who, who is, is that I don't know. I, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of the 343 as they're executing it right now. Yeah. Um, just because I feel like the guys in the center, Iwobi, and who, who, who partners him in the middle? Um, Onyeka. From I, Brentford. Onyeka and, yes. and Onyeka from Brentford. Yeah. I, I just feel like they were a bit overrun in terms of the front three ahead of them. It's like just wingers and attackers. Yeah. So it was mm-hmm. a bit disjointed when, and South Africa were always able to break because I think it was forcing. It will be to play a bit deeper on Onyeka. Mm. Onyeka was just bombing forward. So they didn't, in my opinion, seem like they had a recognized six, you know? Somebody Which they to, haven't had. Okay, to be honest, Yusuf was not supposed to play there, but he yeah. got injured in the first game. He came yeah. back in the last game, mm-hmm. but he came on as a sub. So he hasn't really had a chance to chance play 19 to, and, and, you, and you could see it because, like, in transition, they were very, very vulnerable. Mm. Also, the back three was not very quick in comparison to the South African forwards. So they would just get caught out every time on the break with a ball over the top. Yeah. And then they'd have to, like, try and push the guy into the corner and muscle him off the ball. And all of South Africa's really good chances came from that, you know? Mm-hmm. Quick break, two interchange passes very evidence. quickly. Evidence, you know? Even the ball over the yeah. top to Pasitao yeah. that lead it off to evidence. Exactly. Magopa. Just all, all the same thing, just because you don't really have somebody who, I don't feel like Nigeria controlled the tempo of the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They got the victory for sure, and of course there's nerves about it being a semi-final and everybody's just pushing. But going into a final against an Ivory Coast team, now we know, an Ivory Coast team that is actually very good at controlling the tempo of the game, with Fofana and Kessie sometimes sitting in a double pivot, can, can be very tricky. And, so, and yeah. Uh, I was just going to say that they need to fix that problem we were talking about stri- striking. When it comes to Osim, and he's always being left as the only guy up front, and he's being he's covered isolated. by like three, yeah. three Two, defenders. Three I mean, but yeah. that's, so that's how, okay, to be fair to the but, coach, Jose Peseiro, <laughs> That's what he has done the entire tournament. Yeah. But he's then, not going to risk. He's not going to play open football. That's not him. No, okay, it's not then, open then, football. That's why you love Mourinho. Is that, is that why you love I, Mourinho? I, I love Mourinho because yeah. his tactics work. But in the long run, Nigeria are going to suffer from There's that. no long run. It's seven the games. Final. They're in the final. Yeah. In the long, <laughs> no, no, the longest no. run is a 
actually the final. Yeah. No, no, the and they might, I, I, and they I, I, might yeah. actually lose all that because I, I, they know. don't take their chances. Because if you're providing like five to six chances for Osimhen and he still doesn't score, what are you going to do about it? I mean, Cote d'Ivoire not going to take uh, you guys lightly. For, for, for me, finals are, are are emotional on the foundation of tactics. Yeah. And then, and then, now everything is on Cote d'Ivoire side. Like they have but, stadium, but they but, but you realize that the easiest or the best position is to be the antagonist in this in this case. You go in there with a lot less to lose. Hey, the pressure, the pressure is the, the on pressure on the Cote d'Ivoire is insane. And yeah, okay, for me, I feel is the pressure really on Cote d'Ivoire. Yes, no yes, one yes. expects them to be where they but are. So even no, them no, 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 no. The last class. time, the last time there was pressure for Cote d'Ivoire, they lost four to, to Equatorial Guinea. Mm-hmm. That's the last and, time there was pressure. And, bef- and before, so and, they have not, they have and, not and, proven twice. And, 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 and before, and before and then, that, they lost a final to Zambia. Yeah. Or they lost I a mean, final. I and then Cote d'Ivoire, the they... the game they won, this one that they won two one. There were ten men. At some point, okay. the fans were just like, "We've lost. We've lost." Literally, th- these fans here, these Cote d'Ivoire fans, <laughs> had given up. They say this one, me, Enda. Going into this final, who is the underdog? Nigeria. I may think it. I, I think. Really? I, I, it's okay, Ivory okay. Coast. No, no, let, let me tell you why I think it's Nigeria. I mean, even if it's Ivory Coast, you being the underdog and the pressure being on you are different things. Because yeah. if, if, if you're an underdog and you're in the final, yeah. right, in front of your home crowd, I, your home crowd, I feel like the, the expect, there's expectation for f- them to first, win. First of all, we're only calling them the underdogs because these guys snuck through in the most remarkable Every, way. Yeah. Like they qualified last, they were waiting for goal difference results, like the last of the third. So that's why we are terming them the underdogs now. But coming into the tournament, they were not the underdogs. Okay, coming into the tournament, they were actually favorites. They were favorites, or, yeah. Or one of the favorites. Of the favorites Let's say one yeah, of the favorites. Because they, they have home advantage. They have a really good crop of players. Like mm. their, their forward line with Hala, their midfield with people like Frank Kessier. They didn't even bring Nicola yeah. Pepe in today. They have a Dingra who played really, really well today. Yeah. You know, Sergio Rio will be back for the final for sure. Leadership. The goalkeeper has been all right, you know. So, but you know, it's like there. two totally different teams because even the coach is not the same. Yeah, the tactics are completely different. So I'm just like, they're a dangerous team to play against. The thing is, mm-hmm. they've shown to us, like me, I've not seen them rise up to that type of pressure. Because, okay, they run after after they were, after they got through. The pressure was not as bad because because yeah. everybody was everyone kind of, was like we were not supposed to be here but we're here. Everybody, so let's see where everybody, the team can everybody, go. Everybody was kind of expecting. But when the them pressure was fail. on against Equatorial Guinea, mm-hmm. like they capitulated. Yeah, they did. So they, for me, I feel like they have. I'm not saying they can't win. I'm just saying they need to prove to me that now when the pressure is on, because I guess even this one, the pressure wasn't that bad. It's DRC. Supposing if they got like uh, I don't know if actually they got Nigeria in this game, who did the DRC? Who did DRC beat Egypt? Yeah. yeah. No, Egypt in the round of 16. Yeah, they well, beat uh, um, Angola. Equatorial Guinea, Angola. Angola, I think. No, they, they did. No, 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 no. They did Mali, 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 Mali. Guinea. There was Mali, Mali Mozambique. If they met Mali, I feel like Mali was a. Hey, Mali would have been another. Because again, they're neighbors and they just hate each other. Like, Honestly, for, for me, I feel like Nigeria has more pressure. Because, like, uh, this was. In as much as yes, we're saying Ante Cote d'Ivoire was one of the favorites. I feel like for me, more people expected Nigeria to be in the finals more than more people. But but, expected but, but you see, for Cote Nigeria, Cote so N- yeah. N- Nigeria has the almost quote unquote say like United Madrid cast. Mm-hmm. Their fan base always expects them to be in the final. Whether mm-hmm. they're doing well, whether they're not doing well, they believe. <laughs> okay, it which, is the right which for them pressure to be do you final. think they will feel more? Nigeria has pressure and expectation from people like us yeah. who are yeah. not there. I would request of pressure from, from 90,000 who will be in the stadium. Okay. And then a whole and it's a home one. So how it's, do you it's, prob- it's probably if, going if to be a public was, holiday on Monday. If, if, I, if I was a Cote d'Ivoire citizen, for me, it's more of a, I'm happy that we are here. If we lose... Yeah, but, but think about really, it. Okay, let me give you an example. I'm let me give you an happy. example. If Kenya is in the final in Cote d'Ivoire, uh-huh. you'd be like, you want to take this home to our country, right? But if Kenya is in the final in Kasarani, in Kasarani, yeah, sour. <laughs> yeah, you're so going like, to Kasa. You're going to Kasa. You're like, imagine, ah, so imagine, imagine, you're imagine, imagine, imagine you've taken leave. You've spent yeah. a lot of you money. Actually, you fully lizard for the ticket. Like you're just like, I need these guys to do something. I actually understand you because the game against South Sudan, man, it was so painful. <laughs> But I, I mean, in, in a yes. way, I mean, you're right in the sense of Nigeria have pressure from everyone else. Everyone else, Those yeah. are the, the, the more informed team. They're the ones who have actually made to the final willingly. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. by mistake. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, 
in the second half, the goals were even penalties. Like literally, no one could break down each other. It was yeah. just pressure that led to penalties. Um, who scored the penalty? Truce the call, of course. Yeah. Uh, who I, I mean, I mean, I mean, a lot of fortune in that in in that penalty when you look back at it because. The he penalty got, win or the penalty? No, the penalty that he took mid-game. Because oh, yeah. Yeah. the keeper goes right way and the ball and kind of just goes under him. You know? Will you yeah. call that a perfect penalty? Uh, if you're kicking the middle, you take it down, uh, low to the uh, ground. Uh, and you, you as a striker, weren't you taught if, to if, if, keep if, things if, low? If you're keep taking it into the middle, you do not go low because the keeper leaves a trailing leg. If you're taking it in the middle, you would... But this one, he left a trailing uh, leg. Uh, yeah, and, and that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. It was just that fortunate that it literally slipped under him. You, if you're taking it straight down the middle, you do the Koloture penalty. You run up and <laughs> straight, like if he holds it, he goes in with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Makumi, South Africa, was it a penalty? Eh. It was, eh? Yeah. No debate. What do you think about VR and officiating? I mean, Va- Van Dyke was not the one making the good. tackle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shout out, Chelsea fans. Shout <laughs> out. Shots fired. I honestly think both our penalties were. were Spot on. Mm. And VR, spot VR, on. Spot no pun intended. No pun intended. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that so. jokes the whole evening. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Um, and then there was obviously there was the red card. Kekana got a red card. Then I mean, it was a valiant effort. The, um, he, he did what he had to do. Mm. We can't fault him. I mean, let's face it. Uh, in the Cote d'Ivoire game, we saw an excellent tackle, a bit similar, you know. And the guy got the ball. So yeah. if he'd gotten the ball, we'd we'd have been signing him up to a prem. Sh- team, you know? <laughs> ah, yeah. So, going into the penalties, Makumi, this is a question I really wanted to ask you. Uh-huh. You have seen this goalkeeper save penalties, save yes. four penalties in the previous game. <laughs> what is in your head if you're the first person going to take the penalty? You're the first person now who's going to take the pen for Nigeria against mm-hmm. someone who's just... She, she hates taking penalties, by the way, yeah. You. Yeah, I still hate taking... But my, my first thought would have been, I need to be uh, the change. I need to be the difference. I need to break this cycle of uh, Williams just catching everything and throwing out penalties for everyone else. Yeah. I think the pressure would have been most on the first person. Then after the first person, after you get in the goal, everyone is like, oh, Kumbe, we can do it. Yeah, so the, the pressure is lifted off of the others until the last person, and he and Nacho stood up to that and did I mean, that was, like, first of all, that was a brilliant penalty by Ian Nacho. I think yeah. it was off the post. Mm. I've been mean, super so, having played three minutes. Now I wanted to ask you, Biko, like now you have you are the you're the the penalty taking coaching staff, right? Yeah. Of Nigeria. Obviously, before this game, you've gone through a game plan. If you get yeah. to penalties, this is what we are doing. What are you, what what did Nigeria do that um was like, okay, this is how we're going to counter uh Ronwen Williams okay. saving these penalties? Because one thing we notice about him is he doesn't he doesn't guess. Yeah. Right. I mean, if, if, even if he guesses, he doesn't do that thing it's, of it's, going it's, three it's, directions it's, it's, and then it's, go. It's, it's, he it's, just waits, it's, he waits it's, until it's, the last minute it's, possible, I mean, then he dies. It's, it's definitely an informed guess, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, how do you counter that as a coach? Like, what what is the one so, way you tell your players? Okay, this is how you're going to take the penalty. So, I think um, first of all, you usually see like as people come up to penalties, if you actually have a recognized like keeper who's a shot stopper then usually people make the sub it's also to throw off the forwards yeah mm. because the forwards have also like been watching ideally like tape of say uh, Fofana or Onyeka or whoever it is in goal and they're like okay this guy tends to like to go to his right mm. so changing that keeper kind of throws the balance off for everybody and I think I saw Nigeria do that maybe I'm giving them more credit than they deserve but I'm spot on that the manager knew this yeah, yeah. He, the first penalty taker the guy who sets the tone in the penalty shootout was actually a player that came on in the thing. Morphe, I think. Yeah, I think it was Morphe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. like in the 116th minute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just to throw off the goalkeeper because they gave him the responsibility first, left footer, and he goes straight down the middle. And of course, the keeper goes back to instincts immediately. It's like, yeah. okay, left footer is probably going to go to mm. my left. So you can see him waiting and then taking the jump. But that just throws off the whole arrangement of... So do you think they also they also change the arrangement of who's taking? Oh, definitely. And, you know, I think a lot of psychology and, like, research has proven that this thing of the your star player, the Neymar's, waiting till the third or the fifth penalty one, yeah. to kind of have the decisive penalty was a tactic back in the day, but the guy who takes work. the first penalty sets the tone. You look at the recently concluded World Cup, the best penalty takers from both teams st- stepped up. Mbappe went fast you know, scored a third penalty. That was like to reinvigorate France, to tell them, I've gotten three against this guy. Mm. 
mm. in this game alone you have no reason not to score and then messi mm. just rolled it in like he was playing with his son yeah. so everyone is kind of like okay he's done it Let, let's continue we have, I, we, have, I, we have good messi fans in the building like just shout out 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 shout but basically you see he, the nigerian penalty taker sets the tone and then of course we had some interruption with with super sport uh, with our transmission yeah. for everybody in africa yeah. Yeah. but uh, we didn't see the south african miss but the next player for South Africa misses the first penalty and that kind of already puts you on the back foot because everybody's thinking mm-hmm. everybody's thinking mm-hmm. oh, what are we going to do you know like mm-hmm. we're already one down and mm-hmm. if this guy score the second mm-hmm. if if this guy if 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 this guy score the second we are done Me you know we're yeah. already two nil up kind of thing and Nigeria scored the second Aina let us down you know took it into the sky <laughs> despite sending Williams the wrong way I but you see already the, the tone had already been set so South Africa was always catching up and in a shootout of five penalties mm-hmm. even as a say penalty taking coach coming back from that 2-0 down is you'd rather have your weak player taking the fourth one or the third one depending on the outcome you know it's a very dynamic thing mm-hmm. you have the guy who's not as confident taking the fourth one but you you've scored three of them you're definitely telling him in that lineup that come on bro just go right or go center we believe in you and it's easier to kind of sum out that keep what suffered from that you saw it yeah? yeah yeah you missed the first two by the time the third guy i think was scoring mm-hmm. everybody's like oh, man we're just yeah, we're, we're just, postponing yeah. this thing you yeah, know yeah yeah it's, it's inevitable not, it, it's inevitable it's yeah. kind of like let's just deal with the formalities and you saw it in the world cup as well with france and martinez and the two saves yeah like, oh, the one save and one missed by chomeni and suddenly even when i think uh Fernandez or Molina or somebody I think missed or whatever it was just easy you know mm. it's like ah, it's fine you've missed it's okay ah yeah so to Malizie yeah. uh, one word Nigeria or Ivory Coast final Nigeria Nigeria Ivory Coast Nigeria uh, me of course you know the jersey says I, I can put the mic to the back so that you <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Just yeah. just to make sure just to make sure and they yeah, know. Yeah, Nigeria are through to the final. 3 I was going to say 3 was it 3 2? <laughs> Uh the penalty no I think it was 4-3 like, no like however 40, it ended it 40, however it 40, ended 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. so yeah they have beaten South Africa and Bafana Bafana are now going to the bronze game where uh, some juju is going to work yeah, <laughs> yeah actually um, it'll, it'll be the real juju derby for the, for the other team <laughs> it'll be the real juju derby <laughs> uh, 